What if I told you that you could add hundreds of miles of range capability to your older Tesla with one simple retrofit? Thanks to this brand new retrofit that just came out from Tesla, you absolutely can. But for context, let's talk about charging. Here in America, charging is a bit of a point of contention for nearly every person who owns or is looking at buying an electric vehicle. And rightfully so. I mean, we're still not quite at the point infrastructure-wise where you see a charge station just as common as you would see a gas station on every corner. To make things even more confusing, there are actually several different non-standardized connectors that are used on different electric cars here in the US. Pretty much every non-Tesla these days uses the J1772 connector, which is a slower level 2 charger that you would find at places like home chargers and destination chargers at places like hotels. The faster counterpart of this is the CCS1 port, which isn't its own standard but is confusingly somehow on nearly every non-Tesla car that supports DC fast charging. And last but not least, we've got the Nissan Leaf over there clinging to its Chatamo standard as if it's still investing in Blockbuster stocks like it's 2003. It's slower, outdated, and definitely worse. It's, it's on its way out. But if you're already a Tesla owner or you've mainly followed them in this race with electric vehicles, you're probably most familiar with Tesla's charging port, which until recently didn't even have its own name or standard. This changed, however, in the past couple years when Tesla officially standardized and licensed out its port to other auto manufacturers. In the greatest case of manifestation probably ever, they named it the North American Charging Standard, or NAX for short. This plan actually worked out pretty well. Every other auto manufacturer producing EVs in the US is now providing adapters from CCS to their customers and committing to adding the NAX port to their cars by 2025. So the self-fulfilling prophecy of the aptly named North American Charging Connector seems to have come true. But in the meantime, as great as the Tesla supercharging network out there is, there are still some weird gaps and holes in the more rural areas. That's where other charging networks that predominantly use CCS1, like ChargePoint, Electrify America, come in handy. Over the past three years or so, Tesla has shipped an adapter for its customers that allows them to use existing CCS chargers. But older Tesla owners were left out from this adapter because of the way fast charging works. Let me explain. You see, when you first plug up a DC fast charger, whether it be a Tesla or any other type, there needs to be this sort of handshake communication between the car and the charger. The car, first off, needs to tell the charger what kind of car it is and what the voltage is and how much power it needs. Then the charger says, okay, cool, Here, here's your power, and here's exactly how much you need. But the charging chip that handles this handshake in older Teslas didn't speak the same language that CCS did. So basically, when you would plug up this adapter into a CCS charger in your 2021 or older Tesla, the, the whole thing was kind of lost in communication. It, it, it just didn't work. That is until Tesla came out with this, the CCS retrofit for Model 3 and Model Y. Now, they've already offered this for more expensive cars like the Model S and Model X for a couple years, but now the more lower cost, high volume cars like the Model 3 and Y finally have access to it. So naturally with me owning a 2018 Tesla Model 3, as soon as this came out, I opened my Tesla app and said, sign me up. I went ahead and paid around $375, which included the tax installation and came with the adapter bundled in. Next thing you know, I scheduled a mobile service appointment and a Tesla mobile service tech rolled up in a Model S and started working on my car. The whole process took about 20 minutes and it was pretty seamless for the most part. I wasn't actually allowed to film the repair work itself due to Tesla repair policies. It's a pretty similar situation in their service centers. You can't run around with a camera, but he let me film around it. So as you can see here, he pretty much just opened the trunk and got to work. After he was done, I got a notification in my Tesla app that he was done walked back out of the driveway, shook his hand, accepted the service payment, and boom, he gave me this brand new CCS adapter. So naturally, I decided to put this retrofit to the test. So with your adapter and your phone, the two things, here is how you charge at a non-Tesla charging station once the CCS retrofit's done. Walk up to a charge point here and go ahead and get the CCS port out, um, attach the adapter to it. Once you hear that click, you're good to go. Um, and now you... Knock your port open because this doesn't have the button like Tesla's does. Um, insert it, get your phone out, and Apple Pay it, and you're done. Um, if you have the ChargePoint app, which I've used ChargePoint and Electrify America so far for the CCS non-Tesla supercharger network, and your ChargePoint app will tell you the update on your car's battery status and everything, and the same with Electrify America. So now I get to enjoy the uh, university that this charger station's at. So that's it. 
So, as you can see, the whole process is pretty seamless for the most part. The only hiccups in using a non-Tesla charger really boils down to the charger itself. Some of the pay systems and membership process you have to go through, like with Electrify America, are a little finicky, and you can tell they're not quite as in-house and integrated vertically as a company like Tesla. But after a couple steps, the first time you use this charger, that's it for the most part. And this actually came in handy very quickly after I'd got this done. Recently, I was on a shoot in the small town of Florence, Alabama, which it's in the upper left corner of the state, not terribly far from Memphis. Despite the robustness of the supercharger network all around it, naturally, as you might expect, my, uh, my options out there were a little more limited than usual. But one of these networks that I talked about actually saved my tail. ChargePoint had a 250 kilowatt high-speed DC fast charger in the city of Tuscumbia, which was funded by the Tennessee Valley Authority. So I just rolled up, signed up for a ChargePoint account in like two minutes, tapped my phone on the payment system, and plugged up. I went ahead and charged up a little extra since I was using the Model 3 as our production vehicle for the weekend, so it took me about 40 minutes to go from 15% to 95%. This definitely isn't as seamless as something like a Tesla supercharger, which probably would have made the whole stop more around like 15 to 25 minutes, but out in the boonies, it got the job done just fine. And the next day, I had to run back to get some pickup shots in Cherokee, Alabama, so I was able to stop by on my way back again and top off. This time, it only took about 10 minutes, I had lunch nearby, and I was good to go from there. So, with all that being said, should you get this retrofit for your Tesla? Absolutely. For just $375 and a 20-minute mobile service visit, you get this adapter and peace of mind nearly everywhere you go. In an age where charging infrastructure just keeps getting better and better, range anxiety should be the last thing that you need to worry about. By the way, if you want to check and see if you can already use CCS chargers with your Tesla, run over to the vehicle settings panel, hit software, and then hit additional information. If it says next to the CCS tab enabled, you're good to go. If it says disabled, you need to get this retrofit before you can use the adapter. So yeah, super simple retrofit that absolutely decreased any sense of range anxiety I've ever had. I used it again literally yesterday at another charge point station. So yeah, that's pretty much it. See you in the next one.